Hello, everybody. We're going to lay out the receptacles in this two bedroom house. And because the house was the dimensions are given to us in feet and inches, we're just going to review what that might look like compared to the metric measurements given in the Canadian Electrical Code. So in Rule 26-724, it tells us that no point along the wall can be more than 1.8 meters away from a receptacle. In other words, between the two receptacles, we can go a maximum of 3.6 meters. In feet and inches, that's six feet and 12 feet between. Also, reminding you that in that rule, it talks about the usable wall space. So if a wall is 900 millimeters or more, then they deem it as being uh, a wall that you might need a receptacle on. And so by code, we have to put one. 900 millimeters is approximately three feet. And then in a hallway, no point along the hallway can be more than 4.5 meters away from a receptacle. And that is 15 feet. So to lay out this little uh, house, I'm just going to focus on receptacles. And we won't really delve into the kitchen for this video. We'll look at some special purpose receptacles, such as the washer and dryer. But other than that, it's going to be general purpose receptacles. Now, because it's in feet and inches, what I did was I grabbed a ruler and I looked down here at the porch, for example, porch is five feet by 15 feet. So this short dimension here is five feet and it just happened to work out that a quarter of an inch equals pretty close to a foot there. So I'm going to say that each quarter inch equals a foot and that will help me lay out this, uh, this home. Let's start with bedroom number one. And so what we're going to do is when we first walk in the door, our maximum distance to the first receptacle can't be any more than 1.8 meters or six feet. If I take this and I said each quarter inch is a foot, then my first receptacle has to be before that six foot mark. So I'm going to put it right here. And this is the architectural symbol for a receptacle. Now I mentioned that we can go 12 feet in between the two receptacles. So to the corner here, I have roughly, I guess it's one, two, three and a half feet. And then I'm gonna go around the corner and if I go nine feet around the corner, which is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine plus three and a half would be 12 and a half. So that's too far. I'm going to go eight plus three and a half would be 11 and a half. And so if I put my next receptacle here and say if you had a lamp in between here, then lamp cord would reach. 1.8 meters that way, 1.8 meters that way, or 1.8 meters this way, and that would meet our Canadian Electrical Code. And do the same thing up here. So it's about four feet to the corner. So four plus another eight is the maximum that I could go. So I'm going to keep it just on the side of the window there, just a little bit less than 12 feet. And now, what I'm going to do is I've got about four feet, three inches to the corner, plus another uh, seven almost. So that's 12 feet. Now, what we need to do is look at the distance coming back from this closet door. We can't go any more than six feet back that way, and we can't go any more than 12 feet this way. So we're safe putting another receptacle in there. This little walls piece in the closet is not deemed usable space because it's less than three feet. In this case, it's only about a foot. 
and so it's not usable space. In this hallway, little short hallway, we're still going to need one receptacle somewhere in that hallway. Doesn't matter where you place it. I would probably just put it uh, just put it here. And that is primarily for your vacuum cleaner. In the washroom, we mentioned in another video that we need a receptacle within one point, or sorry, within one meter of this sink. So we're gonna put our receptacle right here for the bathroom sink. And also that cannot be any closer than one meter to the bathtub. And if you absolutely can't get one meter away, you could put it as low as 500 millimeters from that tub, but that's only if you can't actually get it further than that. There's no requirement in here. This, it doesn't actually show the swing of the door, but I'm gonna assume the door would swing up against this wall here. And so that would not be deemed usable space in behind the door. Now we'll walk into bedroom two and we'll use the same format. So when I walk in the door, I'm going to go this way and I'm gonna make sure that my first receptacle is not more than six feet. So it's gotta be before that. So I can back up a little bit and there's my first receptacle. Now again, when the door swings open, we're assuming it is swinging open that way. So in behind the door is not usable space. But if this remaining distance is more than three feet, it's actually probably not going to be. I would say that the door itself is a 30 inch door when it swings open comes to about here, technically. It's gonna be pretty close, but I don't think it's gonna be 900 millimeters. Um, we have a discretionary thing. We can add that receptacle there, even if it's not required by code. So if it's tight, go ahead and put it. Um, or if, you, if your homeowner would like one there, you're more than welcome to put one there. There's no code rule that says you can't have extra receptacles. I'm going to continue on from this first one. So now we're going to go 12 feet between receptacles. That's about uh, three feet, a little over three feet, three and a half feet to the corner. And if I go again, eight feet down here, that'd be 11 and a half feet. And so my receptacle is fine there. Can't go more than 12. So 11 and a half is fine. I can even back that up and go six feet if I wanted to. There's no, like I said, there's no um, rule that says you can't add extras. You just have to have a minimum. So then going from the corner here, we've got one, two, two and a half feet. And this would be another eight, that'd be 10 and a half feet. So I could go right about there, it would give me 11 and a half feet. And then what I want to check is that it's not more than six feet of usable wall space. So that's two feet, but it's less than four feet. So that layout would be fine. That's kind of got my bedrooms and hallway. There's no requirement. In fact, we don't want receptacles in the closet. We, this is kind of a utility room, but that's your furnace and your hot water tank. Uh, those are going to be hardwired in. So when I come into, let's come into the front door. What we're going to do is again, look at that six feet. So six feet would put us there. Now that's dead center of the window. If I have baseboard heat, I'm not going to want a receptacle cord hanging over top of my baseboard heater. So I'm going to back this guy up so that it's off to the side of the window a little bit. And then from that, I would need to go 12 feet. So we've got four, five, six feet to the corner. And then we're gonna go another six feet as our maximum. 
Okay, there's our six. So let's just back it up a little bit. That ensures that we're in the 12 feet, within 12 feet. Now this distance here is actually, that's uh, seven feet to the corner and another couple feet around the corner. That's nine feet. So that distance is too far. And so I'm gonna to have to add another receptacle to make sure that there's not more than um, six feet from this corner coming backwards. And then we look at this chunk of wall. And if it's more than 900 millimeters or three feet, which it is, it's about six feet, a bit over six feet. We're gonna end up putting a receptacle on that wall. And then in the kitchen, by this dining room table, we're going to end up with usable wall space there. And then the rest of this area is pretty much dedicated to kitchen receptacles. So we can cover that in the next video. We also saw in the overview of the rules is that we have to put at least one outdoor receptacle within um, within reach of the ground. And so we put that guy there. Now there's no rule saying that we can't have more than one outside receptacle. And so a lot of times we'll put one at the front and one at the back of the house. Mm. And I think that kind of covers the general purpose receptacles. We can look at our AFCI and GFCI rules and without taking into account the kitchen, we said that uh, generally an AFCI, if it's not a fridge counter, bathroom, washroom or something, it has to be AFCI. So pretty much everything has to be AFCI except for this one in the washroom. I'm gonna go AFCI on each one of these guys. Now, typically you would not see this on a blueprint, sometimes I guess, but I wanna do this for clarity so that we really know what has to be AFCI. So everything in all of these bedrooms, and remember AFCI is sensing for a strange arcing pattern um, and that is to prevent fires. Now we also have to go AFCI on these outdoor plugs. There's no rule that says we can get away without doing them as AFCI. And our exceptions were generally in this kitchen. So our fridge and our counter plugs and uh, beside the wash, uh, said the washroom sinks. All this stuff is AFCI. And then our next um, piece was GFCIs. So any receptacles located within 1.5 meters of a sink. And so that means this guy here is going to be that receptacle in the washroom is going to have to be GFCI. And when we add these ones for the kitchen sink over here, we're going to need a GFCI. And the last little piece is the tamper resistant receptacles. So these are to prevent children from pushing bobby pins and things like that into the receptacle. And the exceptions are above two meters or behind dedicated appliances. So basically each one of these receptacles is going to be tamper resistant style receptacle including the bathroom GFCI. And that has marked on it a TR, just like I'm showing here. So the outside plugs would have to be tamper resistant as well. There's no exception for them. And so we did have some exceptions above two meters in this case. We don't have any receptacles that are above two meters. 
perhaps if we had added a soffit plug. So I might do that. So a soffit plug is often added up in the eaves of the house and they're generally switched so that when you're plugging your Christmas lights, you can turn them on and off. Now, because it's up in the eaves, drop, eaves um, the under part of your roof, it's above two meters and it would not need to be tamper resistant, but it would need to be AFCI. There's no exception for it. Uh, one other thing is these outside plugs would also have to be GFCI. Because you can stand in a puddle of water and plug them in. And that could potentially be a shock hazard. Thank you very much. I hope that's helpful.